Hello, my name is Mary Beth Jackson, and I'm a director here at Redmond Stone Government Consulting. And I'm here today to answer some questions about cost accounting standards, cost impacts. Preparing a cost pro impact proposal is one of the most burdensome requirements in the field of government contract cost accounting. Generally, a cast cover contractor prepares a cost impact proposal when it one, makes a change from one compliant cost accounting practice to another compliant cost accounting practice. Two, has been found to be using a cost accounting practice that is not compliant with one of the applicable cost accounting standards. Or three, has been cited for using a cost accounting practice that is inconsistent with its established or disclosed accounting practices. What is a cost impact? A cost impact is a proposal that outlines the increase or decrease cost on contracts which, were, which are applicable to cost accounting standards due to changes in a cost accounting practice. The cost impact should identify increased or decreased costs by cast cover contract, by contract type, and by various departments or agencies. There are two basic types of cost impact analysis. One, gross dollar magnitude, or known as GDM, and a detailed cost impact analysis. A contractor generates a GDM analysis at a high level and generally utilizes backlog as the basis for calculating the cost impact. The DCI analysis is a contract by contract analysis with an estimate at completion by estimate completion computation. FAR 52-230-6 provides a step-by-step -step process for administrating changes in cost accounting practice and non-compliances, which is handled mainly by your cognizant federal agency official or CFAO. The CFAO is normally the ACO within the Defense Contract Management Agency who is assigned to administer your cast cover contracts. When is the cost impact required? A cost impact analysis is required when a contractor has an accounting change. There are four different types of accounting changes under FAR 52-230-6 that require a cost impact. The first one, a required accounting change, occurs with the issuance of a new CAS standard, requirements based on laws, and accounting practices required to be changed to maintain compliance with cost accounting standards. A unilateral change is a change in cost accounting practice from one compliant practice to another compliant practice that a contractor with a cast cover contract elects to make that has not been deemed acceptable by the CFAO. Desired accounting change is a change that the contractor and the government CFAO agrees is desirable. Non-compliance arises when the contractor fails to comply with an applicable CAS or to consistently follow any disclosed or established cost accounting practice. There are three provisions in the FAR which implement the statutory requirements that the government shall not pay increased costs as a result of a CAS non-compliance. These FAR provisions also require that the re government recover any interest from the time the payment of increased costs was made by the government until the time the adjustment is effected. A change in cost accounting practice occurs when there is a change in the method or technique for one, determining whether a cost is directly or indirectly allocated, two, determining the composition of the cost pools, three, determining the selection of the allocation base, and four, determining the composition of the allocation base. What consideration go, should go into a cost impact calculation? 
An integral part of the cost impact proposal is the list of cast cover contracts and subcontracts that are or will be affected by the change or non-compliance. To comply with the requirements of FAR 52-230-6, contractors should maintain a system for identifying accurately and completely all contracts and subcontracts containing the CAS clause. A detailed cost impact should have data at the contract or subcontract level. The following is a list of data that may be applicable based on the contract types of the CAS cover contracts. The fixed price, the target or estimated cost, accumulated cost to date, the estimate to complete, the target profit or fee, sharing ratio, ceiling ratio, period of performance, profit or fee impact, and the total increase and decrease cost to the government. A calculation of increased or decreased cost by the government for each contract type should be as follows. For flexibly placed contracts, increased cost to the government occurs when more costs are accumulated as a result of an accounting practice change. Conversely, decreased costs to the government occur when fewer costs are accumulated as a result of a cost accounting change. Fixed price contracts increase costs to the government occur when fewer costs are accumulated as a result of a cost accounting practice change and decreased costs to the government occur when more costs are accumulated as a result of a, an accounting practice change. The cost impact must be submitted within 60 days or other mutually agreed upon date after the proposed change is determined adequate and compliant. The date of the contractor's agreement with initial finding of non-compliance or the date the contractor is notified by the CFAO of a determination of non-compliance. When a description has been submitted for a change in cost accounting practice that is dependent on contract award and that contract is subsequently awarded, a notification to the CFAO should be made within 15 days after that award. It is the CFAO's responsibility to provide resolution of cost impacts and determine if the change is acceptable to the government or not. FAR 52-230-6J does provide the CFO the following options if the contractor fails to submit a cost impact proposal withhold an amount not to exceed 10% of each subsequent amount payment to the contractor's affected CAS contracts, up to the estimated general dollar magnitude of the cost impact until such time as the contractor provides the required information to the CFAO, or issues a final decision in accordance with FAR 33 211 and unilaterally adjust the contracts by the estimated amount of the cost impact. I hope these questions have helped you understand more about the CAS cost impact requirements. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or anyone at Redstone Government Consulting and we will be happy to assist you.